Overload protectors keep motors from burning out when they're under prolonged heavy loads. That could be due to a jammed conveyor, a bad bearing, or even too many rapid starts or forward and reverse cycles. Pretty much anything that could increase the winding and motor temperature. Now, while it's typically sold as an add-on accessory, you should consider it indispensable and inexpensive insurance. And of course, it's required by code. An overload coupled with a contactor gives you the beginnings of a true motor starter. And they're easy to use. Here's an overload for a Fuji contactor. You just insert it on the load side of the contactor and tighten the screw clamps, and then set the current where you want it to trip. The load wiring now connects here at the output of the overload. To test it, just press this button. The overload will trip its contacts, and it will set this little indicator in this window. To reset it, just press the blue button here. Now it's important to understand that the overload doesn't cut off power to the motor. It just opens and closes its own contacts. For example, this Fuji unit has a normally open and a normally closed contact. Wire the normally closed contacts in series with the contactor's coil to cut off the power to the motor. Wire the normally open contacts to the PLC so it can monitor the status of the overload. On most overloads, you'll see an option like this where you can set the overload to hand operated or automatic. Right now, this is pointing to the hand operated setting and to rotate this dial to automatic, you actually have to put a screwdriver in this little slot and break off this little tab. That should be a hint that normally you want to keep this in hand operated mode. That way the overload can't automatically reset itself while you're working on the machine. If you do want to do an automatic reset, then break this little tab, depress the blue dial, and twist it to lock it into the automatic reset mode. Here's a WEG overload. It's the same thing. You clamp it in and dial in the trip current that you want. Because the WEG overload blocks access to the contactor's A2 terminal and the AUX contact, those are brought out here so you can still access them. Also, resetting the WEG overloads is a little different too. There are two hand modes and two automatic modes. H mode and hand mode both reset the overload after it's tripped when you press this button. The difference is, if the overload hasn't tripped, hand mode will toggle the overload's contacts so you can test your system's response to an overload fault by pressing this button. That's really handy. But it could also be dangerous, so you have H mode, which doesn't do anything when the overload isn't tripped. You would use H mode if you want to be sure the overload's contacts can't be toggled during normal operation. In auto reset mode, the contactor automatically resets, so pressing this button just toggles the contacts so you can test the system's response to an overload fault. In A mode, pressing the button doesn't do anything because the overload automatically resets and the button doesn't have any effect on the contacts. Again, you'll normally want to use one of the manual reset modes and avoid using the automatic reset modes so your machine doesn't start itself back up unexpectedly. Here's an overload for a GH series contactor. Same thing. You clamp it into the GH series contactor and dial in the current you want it to trip at. The overload contacts on this one are over here, and here's the reset button. The Eaton overload is a little bit different. Instead of dialing in the current you want to trip at, you plug in little heater packs here. You just select the module with the trip point you need. Otherwise, it's still the same animal. Here's an overload for a larger Fuji contactor. Again, it's the same thing, just bigger. Overloads also typically detect phase loss, so if one leg of your power circuit goes down, the overload will trip on that too. Now, does that mean you can't use overloads on single phase motors? No, not at all. Just be sure to run one of the lines in series through two legs of the overload like this. As you can see, these are basically all the same. They just have different shapes and styles, and the contacts are located in different places. Keep in mind that while overloads and circuit breakers and fuses are all system protection devices, they are not the same thing. Overloads protect the motor from prolonged heavy loads and they take time to trip. Circuit breakers and fuses detect things like short circuits and they react very quickly. You really need both to properly protect your system. If you need any help with overloads, please call Automation Direct's free, award-winning tech support during regular business hours. They will be happy to help you out. And don't forget to check out the forums. They're not monitored by Automation Direct's tech support, so don't post any support questions there, but there are a lot of experienced users out there that love helping others.